here goes nothing. Hey guys, welcome back to The Stimulus. I'm Steph Evs and we are back, baby. I have mostly moved in, like 60% moved into my new apartment. I only have unpacked boxes in one room, but I think I just moved them all into this room, which happens to be the biggest room in the apartment. It's gonna be great. And on top of that, I've got this really awesome dynamic lighting going on right now because I broke one of my studio lights in the move. So we'll see how this goes. If it's really bad, I just won't put anything up and I'll have this very festive green background behind me. But but we'll see what happens. But anyway, you know, put all that aside. Now, what you really came here for, the awesome STEM news this week. Our first story of the week deals with the Dwarf Planet series, which has been garnering a lot of attention over the last year due to its very shiny features. Earlier this year, scientists noticed some strange features on Ceres, specifically some very bright spots that stuck out against the dark surface. Speculation as to what could be causing these spots ran rampant, with some people even going so far as to suggest that they could be from alien life. Now, thanks to a study led by Andreas Nathwiz, whose name I may have just messed up, and if so, I'm very sorry, from the Max Planck Institute for Solar System Research in Germany, we know what the source of those bright spots likely is. And for any of you that were hoping it's aliens, it's not, I'm sorry. Instead, the likely culprits are hydrated sulfates that likely contain silicates on the surface. But wait, there's more! Scientists also noted that the brightest spot housed in the Akator crater was creating a haze. This haze only appears during the daytime, and scientists believe that it's a strong indication that frozen water exists near Ceres' surface. In addition to the study in Germany, the Dawn science team also had some exciting things to announce this week. Using a mapping spectrometer on board the Dawn spacecraft, which analyzes how different wavelengths of light reflect off the surface in order to identify the mineral composition, the team was able to see that the surface of Ceres is covered in ammonia-rich clays. So why exactly is this important? Well, it's an indication that Ceres may not have formed in the asteroid belt, but rather formed in the outer solar system. To sum this story up concisely, SPACE IS SO COOL! Our next story of the week deals with a military medical instrument which may be making its way into your home very soon. This is the XDAT, which the FDA has recently approved for civilian use. Before the XDAT was approved for military use, medics had to carry around gobs and gobs of gauze to pack into wounds on the battlefield. This method wasn't very sanitary and it wasn't always effective on the first time, and when someone's bleeding out due to a very deep wound, every second counts. A small organ-based startup called RevMed X, consisting of engineers, veterans, and scientists, decided to tackle this problem head-on. They designed the XDAT syringe to be fast, effective, sterile, and compact and lightweight since military medics already have to carry buttloads of gear on top of very heavy body armor. The actual syringe itself is made out of lightweight polycarbonate and holds enough teeny tiny little sponges to soak up one pint of blood. The sponges themselves are made out of wood pulp and are coated with a substance called chitosin, a blood clotting antimicrobial substance that comes from shrimp. And as you can see, each little sponge has a teeny tiny little X marker on it. This is so that the sponges will show up on x-ray and won't accidentally get left in the body. When the sponges are injected into the wound, they expand to fill the cavity, and since sponges stick to moist surfaces, they can't be forced back out by blood pressure. So why do we need these in our homes? Well, sometimes accidents happen. When more severe accidents happen, it pays to be prepared just in case you don't have time to get to the hospital for medical attention. These devices are great for quickly sealing wounds, especially ones that can't be wrapped in a tourniquet, like say in your armpit or your groin. As for future plans for this technology, RevMedX is actually looking into biodegradable sponges that wouldn't need to be removed. While I can't complain because this technology has saved a lot of lives, you might have saved yourselves a lot of money if you just went and bought a box of Tampax Pearl. That's all I'm gonna say. Our final story of the week takes us to Germany, where researchers at the Max Planck Institute took a giant step towards clean, cheap energy this week. Scientists fired up the Wendelstein 7 accelerator this week and were able to produce helium plasma using nuclear fusion. The team tweeted out this photo of the first plasma, and while the plasma was only present for about one-tenth of a second, this is still a massive step forward. Scientists have been trying for years to use nuclear fusion in order to produce clean, cheap energy. Now, it's important to not confuse nuclear fusion with nuclear fission, which is is the splitting of atoms and typically leads to a lot of toxic radioactive waste being produced. Although radioactive nuclear waste is how a lot of superhero origin stories start, so you know, maybe it's not all bad. Just kidding kids, don't play with that stuff. On the other hand, nuclear fusion is when atoms are fused together. How about that? When this happens at incredibly high temperatures, energy is generated, and it's this energy that scientists are trying to harness. How do they know this will work? Well, because that's how the energy on the sun is produced. 
So if nuclear fusion isn't really that new of an idea, what made this so important? Well, up until this point, scientists had been using reactors known as tokamaks, which is the oddly specific Russian word for ring-shaped magnetic chamber. These donut-shaped reactors are only capable of controlling the plasma for about six and a half minutes, which isn't enough time to harness the energy. They actually require more energy to run than they produce, so it's not really efficient at all. In contrast, scientists believe that the Stellarator will be able to control plasma for up to 30 minutes at a time. While the W7X is only a proof of concept, it's really going to help researchers learn a lot about the process. The next plan of action for scientists is to heat hydrogen nuclei up to 100 million degrees Celsius in order to simulate the conditions required for nuclear fusion on the sun. So that brings us to our question of the day, which I didn't really come up with a good one because I've been a little bit busy this week. So why don't you let me know in the comments section down below what has you most pumped about Star Wars The Force Awakens, which comes out this week. I'm so pumped. All of it. My answer, everything. Rey, Captain Phasma, seeing Han and Chewie in the Millennium Falcon again. I'm so pumped. As always, if you want to check out any of the stories I covered a little bit more in depth, I will include links to my sources down below, along with links to all of my social media, which you can check out in your free time. If science is your shtick and you want to see more videos like this, please feel free to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm putting out videos every week to talk about the latest and greatest in STEM news. I'm going to try so desperately to get back on my regular schedule this week, so if you find any really cool STEM-related news stories throughout the week, please feel free to send them to me on Twitter at at 43 using the hashtag twistem, and they just might wind up in next week's episode. But with that, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Stay well, stay awesome, and may the Force be with you. Microphone is generally recommended. The first R, uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm an idiot. I am spitting everywhere when I speak. I hope the camera's not picking it up because it's really not glamorous. Eh, how many times do I say very? Too many. Ah! <laughs> Max Planck. Why is that so hard? Max Planck. We now know what those sort of the blah, 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 blah. I almost had it. That was with a medical. Mm -hmm. Too many M's in this sentence, Evans, but I'm gonna do it because we're here now. Which the FDA has recently approved for military. I just, I can't. Where do I point? Where do I point? Where do I point? Loser, right here. Yay. I'm not good at the pointing of, at the imaginary things because backwards, okay. A blood clotting antimicrobial. She's beauty and she's grace. She'll belch right in your face. <laughs> Took a giant step forward this week for clean, cheap energy. Remember what you're saying, Evans. Akuna Matata, Akuna Matata, Akuna Matata. It means no worries for the rest of your days. It's our problem free philosophy. Akuna Matata.